of the gun sight Mark 18, an automatic lead computing gun sight for use with 50 caliber guns. Let's check the units on a mock-up turret and operate the sight. The Mark 18 automatically computes deflection, windage, and gravity. You no longer have to figure lead. The Mark 18 does this for you and will put your first bullets on the target. But remember, you still have to track smoothly and span it properly to continue firing into the target. Okay, with the sight in operation, let's see what happens. By means of a selector switch on a selector dimmer unit, combinations of fixed and gyro reticle images are selected. The dimmer ring controls the brightness of the reticle images. The reticle images are reflected in the reflector plate on the sighting head. The fixed reticle image, composed of a circle and a cross, is boresighted with the gun and will always show where they are pointed. The gyro reticle image, with its center pit surrounded by six diamond-shaped dots, is held on target by the gunner as he tracks. With the gunner's head in the correct position directly in front of the reflector plate, by looking with the left eye only, he sees the fixed reticle image. The right eye alone sees only the gyro image. Looking with both eyes, the gunner sees two images almost superimposed when his guns are at rest at zero elevation and zero azimuth. But when tracking, the gyro image moves away from the fixed cross. Now the gyro image is held on the target, indicating the line of sight and the fixed image shows where the guns are pointing, indicating line of fire. The difference between the center pips of the two images corresponds to lead as computed by the sight. The gyro reticle image is reflected from a mirror, which is part of a gyroscope. Located in the gyro unit at the back of the sighting head, the position of the gyro and its mirror, and consequently the position of the gyro reticle image is influenced by the electromagnetic coils which are wound around these four poles. The fields set up by these coils are controlled by the various other units of the gun sight. Here's how it actually works out. A constant output from a 22 volt voltage regulator flows through a junction box to other control units. These modify the current fed to the sighting head where the resulting magnetic fields influence the motion of the gyroscope. With you to start things going, the various control units get down to business. As the indicated altitude and air speed are set in, this control unit introduces corrections for windage. The gyro unit responds, and the result is seen in the reflector plate as the gyro reticle moves to allow for the correction. Elevation and azimuth control units are connected mechanically to the turret. As you operate the turret, these units move a corresponding number of degrees in elevation and azimuth. Introducing windage lead corrections for the momentary position of the turret. 
But the basic changes in lead are introduced by the range control unit. Before ranging, the target is identified, and on this dimension dial, the target's known wingspan is set in. The wingspan lever affects the diameter of the imaginary circle formed by the diamond-shaped dots of the gyro reticle edge. Once the wingspan is set into the sighting head, ranging is done in the Martin turret by operation of foot pedals. In this turret, cables provide a mechanical connection between the foot pedals and the range unit. The range unit, electrically connected to the sighting head, introduces time of flight lead corrections determined by ranging. A second cable mechanically connects the range unit with the range drum of the sighting head. Resulting rotation of the range drum controls the inner diameter of the circle of diamond-shaped dots in the gyro reticle image, making apparent to the gunner the proper foot pedal adjustment to range a target of known size. Finally, by using the selector switch, the gunner can choose the reticle image best suited to his own preference and combat condition. With the selector switch on fixed position, the gunner sees only the cross and circle of the fixed reticle image. The gyro motor should not run in this position. Turning the switch to fixed and gyro, the gunner sees both fixed and gyro reticle images in the reflector plate. In some positions of the turret, the center pip of the gyro image may be obscured by the cross of the fixed image, but the six diamond-shaped dots are easily seen. The circle of the fixed reticle image can be removed at any time by lowering the fixed mast lever at the left side of the sighting head. The center cross of the fixed reticle image remains visible and will always indicate where the guns are pointed. Raising the fixed mast lever brings the circle back into view again. The third position of the selector switch is marked gyro day. With the switch in this position, the gunner sees only the center pip and six diamond-shaped dots of the gyro reticle image, as is the case when the switch is at gyro night. But in gyro night position, the electrical circuits of the gun sight are modified to meet night combat conditions. Because of poor visibility at night, it is impractical to range on a target, and tracking must be done by following the exhaust flame. Therefore, in gyro night position, all windage computations of the gun sight are eliminated, leaving only relative speed lead, which is still computed and introduced automatically as the gunner tracks his target. And that's the Mark 18, with all its units cooperating to give you perfect sighting for on-the-target shooting. Ready to try it out? Okay, we're off. The locations of the various units of the Mark 18 are not exactly the same in other installations as they are in the Martin upper turret, but operation of the gun sight is the same. The sight switch first, on. Now the selector switch to gyro day position, if you prefer to use the gyro image alone. Or, if you prefer, the more commonly used position, fixed and gyro, which gives you both reticle images. The brightness of the images can be decreased or increased as needed with the dimmer ring. If it's a very bright day, you'll need the sun filter but not today. Since you know pretty much the kind of target you're most likely to encounter in your particular combat zone, you can set in the known wingspan for that target as soon as you're on your way. And your indicated airspeed and altitude from the pilot. Got them? Set them in. Now, depress the right ranging pedal all the way down to minimum range to move the dots of the gyro reticle image as far from the center pip as possible. When slewing the turret, always depress the right foot pedal to minimum range. If you don't, it will cause the image to disappear and the gyro to tumble. This means a delay before the gyro reticle will appear again, a delay before you can start blasting. 
That is, if you have a target to begin with. Ah, said and done. And just the type you expected. If it hadn't been, you'd have changed the wingspan setting to the proper one for whatever else appeared. But you're all right. So get on it. Sight the center pip of the gyro reticle image on the target and start immediately to track smoothly. At the same time, move the diamond-shaped dots by adjusting the foot pedal while you blast him out. More company? You can take care of him, too. But remember, when you slew around to get him, keep that right pedal down. Then the gyro image will be there when you need it most. And here's a tip that will save you time. Pick up the target with the fixed cross. Begin to track smoothly. Then bring the gyro image to bear on the target. If the enemy is out of range, so far away that even at maximum range setting, the dots won't close down enough to span the target, then sight the center pip on the target. Track smoothly and continue to track. When he comes in close enough so that the inside points of the dots span him continuously, he's within range. Then blast him. And that would be another meatball for this ship. <laughs>